Uh, welcome once again for uh, the second talk. Slightly uh, a smaller audience this time. I have no mirroring on my laptop, so it will be uh, a challenge. I'm going to watch to this screen. Uh, this is a talk about an optimization to the Smarty compiler that I have been working on. This is not really a talk about Smarty, but a talk about how to make things faster without much effort. Uh, about myself, I still work for product marketing software. I still studied computer science at the Play University, and I'm the author of the MQP, of the uh, PHP CPP library. Um, one of the questions that people often ask me about the PHP CPP library: What is a good use case for this PHP CPP library? And I often respond: Well, that's when you have an algorithm or a data structure that takes a lot of resource, that takes a lot of CPU or a lot of memory, then you can port that to C++ using this PHP CPP library. And I notice that people start writing their own simple scripts in C++, and that is often not a good use case. So I was thinking, what would a good use case be? And I thought, well, smart could be a good use case. I don't know if you're all familiar with Smarty, but this is an example of a very easy Smarty template. You can use dollar signs and variables and if statements, and this is how you make a Smarty template. You can do more complicated stuff than this, but that is not important for this talk. This is a Smarty template. And how do you use this in a PHP script? Uh, you use it like this. You create a Smarty object, you assign a couple of variables to it, and you display a template. And the Smarty object takes care of reading that template file and showing the output and replacing the variables and showing uh, and processing the if statements. That's what Smarty is. I think we're all familiar with that. How would you do this if you had to implement this yourself? At the very first time that I used Smarty, I thought, oh, this is going to be crazy slow because Smarty is going to evaluate your template every single time over and over again and it's going to use regular expressions and pattern matching and string replacements to do all these sort of stuff so this is, this must be crazy crazy expensive and crazy slow if you if you look at the implementation but it turns out that smarty has a smarter way of doing this under the hood smarty transforms that tpl file into a PHP file. The very first time that Smarty sees your, that TPL file, it reads it, it parses it, it analyzes it, and it turns it into a PHP file and stores that PHP file on disk. And it runs that PHP script. The second time you show the same template, it will no longer have to scan that template, but can show the PHP file, can execute the PHP file right away. So that's much faster. And to, get you, to give you an idea, this is what uh, the simple template that I showed before looks like after it has been compiled by Smarty. So you can see that it has, it is turned into well, a messy PHP script, but essentially it does the same. It has also that name that it is showing, and it also has this if statement inside. And the question that I now have, do we consider Smarty to be a compiler. Um, I never thought Smarty to be a compiler. For me, it was just a silly script language. But if you start thinking about it, what exactly is a compiler? If you go, go to look at Wikipedia, this is the definition that Wikipedia has of a compiler. It's a computer program that transforms source code written in one programming language, for example, the Smarty language, into another computer language, which is the type language. Well, that's exactly what Smarty does. It transforms that TPL file into a PHP file, which is, in fact, according to the definition. So Smarty, you could call Smarty a compiler. And would that be a use case for PHP? Imagine you find someone, you speak to someone on a conference and say, well, what you're doing? Well, I'm writing a compiler. Oh, that must be so cool. I want to write a compiler myself too one day. Yes, a question. Is it more like a transpiler? That's a definition <laughs> topic. I don't know. Well, what do you say? Transpiler? Transpiler, yeah. They used the term uh, when it was a talk about, uh, about JavaScript, where they used uh, an object oriented version of JavaScript, yes. which would, wouldn't run in the browser. But 
it would compile or transpile, I don't know what the term is, into real JavaScript, which is uh, runnable. This, okay. is the, this is the first, the first time that I've heard that word transpiler. Just how coffee script is yeah, like, like coffee script, but it wasn't the yeah, coffee script. So I've never heard the word transpiler. But I guess it, I, I think you can you can give a definition that said compiling is only the process of turning something into machine code and every other thing is then called compiling. If you change the definition, it no longer is a compiler. That's true. Uh, it matches this definition. It has a Wikipedia entry. Yeah. But imagine you find someone as you, you speak to someone, you say, well, I'm writing a compiler or a transpiler. And so you say, oh, oh, that's cool. What language do you use for that? And you say, well, I'm writing a compiler in PHP. Well, that is lame. You don't, <laughs> you, you don't use PHP as a language to write a compiler. Yet, Smarty is a compiler written in uh, PHP. So this is a huge opportunity for PHP CPP because PHP CPU has a perfect a PHP CPP is a perfect use case, a CPU intensive algorithm, an algorithm that takes up a lot of memory, which exactly is what the compiler is. So this would be a perfect use case for PHP CPP. Uh, if you think of it, what exactly is Smarty? Well, Smarty is a PHP script and it turns a template file into a PHP file. And when you when you look at this, this single line, there are two very obvious improvements that are possible. One of them is you can implement Smarty not as a PHP script, but in a native language. You can use C or C++ for the implementation of Smarty. Would make it faster to turn that template file into a PHP file. And the second improvement is, well, while you're busy converting one uh, representation into another, why would you convert it into PHP, which is a slow language, and not convert it right into machine code anyway, which is going to be faster? So these are two obvious improvements. And uh, the end is that Smart would then be a native library that turns the template files into machine code, which is much faster and has the added benefit that uh, you can use Smarty template suddenly also in other projects. Because we in our company are thinking of moving large parts of our code base to C++, and we have many customers with a lot of Smarty templates. So we cannot move to another language than PHP because we have to support these templates. Okay. This is the idea that you get one day, and uh, this is not something that you're going to do seriously because that's going to be a lot of work, of course. But you get the idea, and every time you see Smarty, that idea is triggered, and one day you decide to create an account on GitHub and just let's try, let's try a little bit. Maybe we can do something. We're not going to build the entire Smarty per project, but we can. Maybe only the if statement. Okay, let, let's see what we can do, what we can achieve. So that's how it all starts. Some background information about compilers. I'm not an expert on compilers. I just Googled this, I just tried some things, and I wanted it to be small and simple. Um, so I once gave this talk somewhere else, and there was some teacher from the university who was specializing in compilers in the public, and he was tweeting while he was doing Every, every bullet point was, was open for discussion. So this is just what, what I read on the internet. Uh, a compiler has two different steps. First, it looks at the input file and it picks out the tokens, the if statements, the, the, the keywords, etc. After that, it p takes these, uh, these tokens and turns it into a, a syntax tree or a parse tree. That parse tree can be optimized and uh, checked for type compatibility and things like that. And after that, that, that tree is converted into a new representation, often the machine code. Now, let's start with the first step of this compilation process, the tokenizer. If you, as a human, look at this, this template file, you immediately see the tokens. The, the HTML tags are tokens for us as well, but for the smart enough, it's just raw text. So the raw text HTML body handle hello, then we see suddenly a token which is a variable. And we see a token which is an if statement, and a token which is the H variable, and the bigger than that's a token. These are all tokens. They are picked up by the tokenizer. And the first thing when you write a program, or write a compiler, is to write this tokenizer. Yes? You had the, the if slash, um, um, brackets slash if brackets, 
Yes? The second line, the last one is the star token, but the closing bracket should not be there, right? Or should it? Or do I don't have to do it? Um, yeah, no, it's a, wrong. it's a very good question that you're, that you're asking. Uh, I don't know why, why it's called star tokens, because it doesn't start anything, just that's, these are tokens. Yeah, they, they, smart, they start a new context, yes. But uh, this, this is a star token because it starts a new context, this is a star token because it starts a new protocol, this is just a regular token. It was in the normal context and it stays in the normal context. But I think the start words can better be removed here. These are tokens. Oh, yeah, and I also said smarty tokens, which are tokens inside smarty tokens. Okay. Well, it's confusing. <laughs> <laughs> it's confusing. Okay. Well, we have uh, token actually has, has state because, uh, for example, inside uh, curly braces, when you see uh, inside the string, if you use a curly brace, it is not picked up as a token, while it is picked up as a token if it is used in another context. Writing this tokenizer is the first step that you have to set when you're writing your own compiler. Luckily, we have a tool for that, which is called Flex. Uh, what you do with this tool, you simply just tell to Flex, well, these are my tokens. These list of things, these are my tokens, and Flex, could you please for me write the rest of my software? Flex has uh, documentation online. This is. Uh, very simple web page uh, describing flex. Let me see what the documentation is. Because I wanted this project to be simple. I was not, I had not the intention to make something very complicated. So I wanted to use only simple software and no complicated. And this is just easy enough to use. It is. On the, the, I don't like the syntax too much, but I read this, web, this website and it took me a day or so to learn this, this tool. And uh, in the end, I, I managed to write a simple file describing all the tokens, which is this file. And you can define every token in this file on the left side, and on the right side you can uh, say what token it is. So you see uh, Inside the curly brace, we have, a, we have a special state, and if we see the, the, the word true, it means the true token is found. If we see the word false, the false token is found. And some tokens, like a like literal uh, integer, a literal number, well, we return that it is a, an integer, integer token, but we also have to remember what integer it was. So we store a token object, which basically is a string. This is all the only programming that you have to do for the, for the tokenizer. It is doable. It is not so difficult. You compile the tokenizer, or transpile the tokenizer, um, and uh, with, the, with the flex command, and it is turned into a tokenizer.c file. A tokenizer.c file that looks like this. Well, this is automatically generated code. This code was not written by me, but by the program, and it looks ugly. Uh, but uh, it works, it does the job. And hmm? looks like the code from the Z. No, this looks much better. <laughs> there, there, there are comments in it and uh, uh, it, does, uh, it does the job. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's quite complex. It, it has created an array because it, it scans each byte and with every byte it goes See in this in a stable is this one of the bytes that is going to change to a new state or so it is quite complicated uh, software that's created but it is automatically created so we don't have to worry about it it is complicated but not maintained by us but by that program flex program and once you're ready you can uh, call the yylex function and it returns the token that it found this is the core of your compiler this is the core of finding the tokens. And the next step that you have to set is uh, doing something with these tokens. And the tokenizer says, well, I found an if statement, I found an identifier, I found a, no a number. You, you have to pick it up and analyze that. How is the tree to reverse? There's no tree. Ah, there's no tree. <laughs> at, this, at this point in time, there is no tree. The tokenizer only says, I have an if statement, I have a while statement, I have a number. 
Now you're going to, to write the next step, and you say, well, token, now you're going to build the 3S. You, 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 the token say, well, I see an end tip. Well, that's, that's wrong, because there was no opening if statement. Up to now, there is no syntax yet. We now have to do the next step and build a tree. Exactly. And report syntax error, and uh, if you see uh, expressions like this, 2 plus uh, 3 times 4, you must uh, know the, pr the precedence. This can be quite complicated to parse this tree. It's doable, but quite complicated, and we don't want to do complicated stuff. Um, so this would be the tree if we parse the, tem the template, the, the example template that I gave with one if statement and one uh, variable. It would be basically like this. Um, wouldn't it be nice if we had a program that does this for us? That we can just give a set of instructions and could you write our software, please, so that we don't have to write this complicated parser. And such software exists. And uh, the famous ones are uh, Yuck and Bison. Yuck is a very old one. It's, I believe, not even open source. And Bison is one that is based on it, and that is open source. And uh, that is, when you look at compiler building on the internet, you find references to Bison everywhere. And also, Bison has a website, essentially the same design as the, uh, the Flex uh, documentation. Uh, no design at all. But um, it has uh, a lot of documentation, a lot of examples and uh, things. So I started working with this, and uh, suddenly I found on, um, on Stack Overflow, a question about Bison, and some guy answered that question, why don't you use Lemon for this? Lemon, I had never heard of it, I, I had heard of Bison uh, because I've been using Linux, and I see that being installed all the time, thinking, well, I'm not going to use it, it's probably very complicated. So, but I saw this remark about Lemon. So I did a Google for Lemon, and this was the documentation of Lemon. And you see what is said, Lemon is similar to the much more famous program in Yacht and Bison, but Lemon is not compatible with them. There are several important differences. Lemon uses a different grammar syntax which is less prone to programming errors. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> the parser generated by Lemon is both re-entered and thread safe. Well, that sounds good too because we are going to write a, 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 a smart uh, compiler and that could be running in a web server process that has multiple threads and we don't want to have crashes if one compiler process is running while another compiler program process running as well. What is re-entered? Re-entered means that um, you can call the same function while another thread is already running in that function. That's a special case of thread safety. When it's thread safe, then it's always re-entered. If, if you have a function that uses a global variable, or if you have a function that uses a static variable, then that function is not re-entrant. Mm -hmm. Right, and then the, fun the, the whole program is not... Right. Then is that function not re-entrant? And that is no problem if you're writing a single-threaded program, but if you're writing a multi-threaded program, you want your functions to be re-entrant. You don't want your function to use global variables and static variables. Uh, and I think that the Bison program was originally meant to be used in compilers, and compilers only have a single-thread compiling the program, and after it is ready, it exits. And this Lemon program is part of the SQL Live suit. It's part of uh, a database system that must run continuously, that must uh, run for hours. Uh, so they don't want memory leaks, and they want to uh, access it from multiple threads at the same time. Because the other advantage of Lemon is that it, is, uh, uh, it doesn't leak memory, which we also want. So we have this very famous Bison project, and somehow I ran into this Lemon project, which is part of uh, a simple database engine, and uh, it seems to be better than, uh, uh, easier and uh, better than uh, uh, Bison is. There's documentation online, and this is only, well, a very small file explaining how it uh, works. Um, some examples. This was really easy to learn. This was in fact, easier than the, the initial part, the flex part. And uh, if we go back, can we go back?
That's a good question. That's a good question. Yes, it is Threadsec. Yes. I've read that on the documentation. They have a special option that you, have, that you should use to have it thread safe. The default configuration is not thread safe. It uses global variables. But you can set a special option, and then you have to pass in a state variable that it uses for all its globals, and then it is uh, thread. Um, um, these parsers take uh, a formal grammar, and they turn that into a function to, to parse the output of the tokenizer. What exactly is a formal grammar? I once again, I went to Wikipedia to find it out. And this is the definition that uh, they gave. In formal language theory, a grammar is a set of production rules for strings in the formal language. Uh -huh. Long story. Difficult. But they don't want a formal grammar. They want a more specific formal grammar. They want a context-free grammar. Uh, which is an even more complicated uh, definition in formal language. A context free grammar is a formal grammar in which every production rule is on the form V arrow W, where V is a single non terminal symbol. Okay. That is also quite complicated. The problem with definitions I have is that the human brain doesn't work with definitions. If you want to teach to a three year old or a four year old what a cat is, you're not going to give the definition of a cat. You give them a picture of a cat. And you give them another picture of a cat, and another picture of a cat, and by then, the human brain has formed the concept of a cat. You should also show a picture of a dog. Yes, exactly, because you can't give a definition of a cat. You can give a dog, yeah, this is an animal, and it has four legs, and then you show them, well, that's, that's an animal with three legs. Oh, okay, that's a three-legged cat. <laughs> oh, this, is, this, this, this cat's not alive, yeah, this is a dead cat. But I thought the definition, it's, it's was supposed to live, wasn't it? Definitions are difficult. You saw that with the compiler before. You know, we had the definition of a compiler, it turned out to be the wrong one. Um, so what exactly is a context-free grammar? Well, this is an example. We show a picture. Uh, we show a picture of insert query. If you, if you, an insert query in SQLite looks like this. And it would be nice if you have the entire smarty language written out like things like this. What does smarty look like? Well, this is, this is allowed for an if statement, this is allowed for a variable, etc. You can do it in images, you can also do it in uh, a Becker's extended Becker's North form, which looks like this. You probably have seen these things on the web pages if you were working with languages and tools to show exactly what is allowed. This is for a very simple program syntax for a program that could, for example, look like this. And how cool would it be if we could write Smarty in code like this, if we could tell Lemon, okay, this is what my language looks like, please generate the code to parse this language. Well, we can. <coughs> and. Lemon does not take images as input. Lemon takes files like this as input. And I, this is only a small subset of Smarty, so I said, well, we, we have Boolean expressions, and we have uh, uh, normal expressions, and we have if statements, and I made a, a subset of the Smarty uh, features. Uh, the actual project has more features, but for this talk, I have a small subset. And you define what the uh, elements of the language look like, and for every element, you define an action that should be taken once uh, such an element is encountered. And these are simple objects. So when you see an if statement, Lemon creates an if statement object. And when you see a Boolean expression, uh, Lemon creates a Boolean expression object. This is the only programming that we have to do. And we have, of course, to create these classes, but they are really simple classes. This, for example, is the class of an if statement. Now, an if statement has three, uh, three uh, lemma variables. Uh, the expression that's evaluated, the statements that are going to be executed when it is true, and the statements that are going to be executed when it is false. So this is 
straightforward programming. There's nothing, nothing difficult is going on on here. I have not done any optimizations or performance issues. I thought, well, let's try to see if it works and the optimization can go down. There's nothing in it. Only the last function that's going to be used in the last step when we are going to turn this object into machine code. This is the literal number. Only one member, the actual value. And uh, this is the literal variable. Only one member, the name of the variable that is going to be out. Simple objects. Simple objects. Nothing complicated is going on. Once we have uh, created that input file and we have created all these classes, we can compile or transpile the grammar.lemon file and it turns it into a grammar.c, grammar.h, and a grammar.out file. This is the file created by Lemon. This is once again a complicated C file. Not written by me, not written by uh, any human being, but written, but automatically generated by Lemon. And this is also quite complicated. Also these long tables with states and supported things. And you get the ID. It is complicated stuff. So writing a parser is not easy, but we don't have to do it ourselves. We just have to specify all these parser rules and the parser we get for free for doing for the command. And this creates a parse function, I believe it is set here. This is the actual parse function that you can call from your compiler program. It creates some other output files and header file with the with the constants defining all the tokens and some or grammar.out file, I think it's some debugging file or so, it is not used in the project, but it, it came out of Lemon. Maybe you can uh, do something with it. And now we are halfway through of building our own compiler. This is the only thing that we actually have to program. We have to create a parser object, we have to find all the tokens, and every token we, key, we, we give to the parser object, to the parser. This is the core of your compiler. In reality, it's a little more complex than that because we have to keep some state variables, but essentially, this is it. This, it is this simple. <coughs> so by this time, we have this tree that is fully balanced and that works completely, and now we have to further deal with that tree. The question is, what do we want to create? Imagine that we were writing a smarty verifier, a validator, only to see if the smarty file was valid or true. Well, then we're ready by now because the fact that we have that tree means that we have a valid smarty. If you want to write a smarty minifier or printifier, we can say to every node in the tree, okay, output yourself, but then minify it or printify it. If we were writing a smart interpreter, we can run add an execute function to every node to say, okay, execute yourself. The, the if statement is going to execute the, the, the expression and run the true or the false branch. We, however, are going to generate machine code. And that is going to be the hardest part. Once again, this was the tree, and we can add to every node in the tree a function to turn itself into machine code. <coughs> this is difficult. Writing machine code is, uh, is no fun. I did it once during my study. And uh, I wanted to keep it that way. Um, it's not fun. I don't like technical stuff. I like making good software, but doing technical stuff is not my, my thing. So an intermediate approach would be to generate C code. You could turn your Smarty file into a C file and start a C compiler to do that. In fact, if you look at what the HHVM project did, the Facebook project, they did exactly that. They were also writing uh, their, uh, their own PHP interpreter, their own PHP engine, and their initial version was turning their PHP code base into C++. Why? Probably because they thought that's the easiest solution. It is easier. It's easier than generating machine code. But it is much lower. Think of it. 
the C code is first written to disk. You have to generate the C code. Then you have to start the C compiler. And internally, the C compiler is going to, once again, parse it and tokenize the C input. And the C, in, the, the C compiler builds the same syntax tree and is going to turn that syntax tree into uh, machine code. Stores that to disk. Your program has to open that file, execute it, and run it. Much slower, but still very fast, form, but much slower, uh, and it would be much faster if it could generate machine code right away. But this would be a solution. But we are in a lucky situation because uh, there are libraries that can help us. And a very famous one for that is the LLVM library. LLVM is a library that allows you to use C++, uh, a C++ API to create machine code. And the machine code that you, that you use LLVM for works on almost every compiler. And there are some others. Uh, Mozilla, the browser, also use uh, JIT technology inside. And they have a library. And I found somewhere on the internet, somewhere deep, not even in the first 20 or 40 uh, matches on Google, a small library called libjit. You could use that. Oh, let's uh, look at LLVM. This one is famous. This, everyone is speaking about, this is a big one. And uh, it's the backend of the, of the Clang compiler, which is a very fast compiler and probably better than the, the GCC compiler that most people use. And big companies like Intel are contributing to this. This project is cool. I have heard. This is their website. And uh, well, we, we want to write to generate machine code, so we look at the documentation. It is, um, it's a big website. Getting started is basically about how to download it and compile it. Um, it's a big website. It takes some time to find the right documentation. Um, okay, this, this, this is an example. Okay. But, I've, I spent too much time on this website and I thought, well, I, I do a Google search on getting started with LLVM and I found a guy writing his own blog about how to write your own compiler using LLVM and I thought that's so nice of him. And uh, he wrote this blog and uh, it's exactly the things that I just mentioned. Uh, uh, the steps that he is going to take is exactly first. The tokenizer using Flex, then the parser using Bison. Well, we use Lemon, but he's using Bison. And then the final step is turning this tree, this abstract syntax tree, that's the ASD, into LVM uh, machine instructions. That's going to be the cool part of writing this thing. So that's um, what we uh, we have to do. And we say um, LVM makes this all very easy for us. Oh, well that's, that's cool, because that's what we want. <coughs> oh, oh. One of the downsides of LLVM is that it's really hard to find useful documentation. Okay, well, I, I found it out already. Uh, their online tutorial and other such docs are wildly out of date, and there's barely any information for the C++ API, unless you really dig for it. Um, I found the best way to learn LLVM for example. Uh, there are some examples. and. There is also an LLVM live demo website which can emit C++, C++ code for C programming. That's cool. That's a problem. Well, maybe there's an alternative. So I, I Google for does someone have a copy of this page by accident and a guy wrote a blog about this that he always uses this demo site and that he found out that someone has somewhere put a secret demo page online. This is a website you can give input the, the, the C program that you want to uh, to have uh, the, the, you want to you want to create machine code that does the same as the C, uh, code, uh, the C program and what uh, output you would get to do that with LLVM. And we are working with C++, so we want to see 
the C++ code that is necessary to manage this. This is very simple, of course, so uh, uh, it's just an example of what simple C++ code we need to have this out. And to have this small, simple program, the only thing that we have to write in our C++ code is this piece of, uh, of codes. This is really trivial code. Now this is no fun. This, this, this was a point, this was like giving up. If you have to write such complicated code for your, your, your compiler, this, this project is not going to be a fun project that's the, that we're going to do in the evening hours. Um, so I decided to abandon this, this LVM project. This is too complicated. So I went back to Google trying to find alternatives for using LLVM. And I already mentioned this legit, this small project. And in fact, it is pretty cool. It's also open source. It's on GNU.org. And uh, it is not very actively maintained. It is not even in the, uh, in the Ubuntu repository. I normally use Ubuntu, so I try to up to get update and install uh, all my software. But I had to download it myself from uh, some resource. It was not version, so you had to use the uh, repository instead of downloading a, a, spe a specific version, but it worked. <coughs> and there was documentation online, and the documentation was very clear. And uh, it was really fun working with this library. This is not as famous as uh, LLVM, but well documented, and it simply works. So that's what I used. So the last step in uh, the process of writing my own compiler was using this libjits to generate machine code. And this is one of the most complicated classes, the if statement, uh, that does a branch. And if something is correct, it branches to one direction. If it's wrong, it's branched to the other direction. This is the way how you should generate machine code. It is not so complicated. It is not so complicated as you would expect. This is it. This was basically the most difficult part of writing the young compiler. And now we have written a compiler that we can use. This is a C++ library, so we use it as a C++ library. We can pass it a template object, we can pass it some data, and we can process it. That's it. But this is not yet PHP. This is only C. We have now a C++ smart environment. We could also do it as a PHP uh, extension, and we can use it like that. I thought initially that I had this PHP uh, extension on GitHub, but I think I only made it on my own computer and threw it away or so because I didn't find it there. So this morning I rewrote that PHP uh, extension. Now you might think writing a PHP extension is like crazy difficult, it's a lot of time. Well, not with the PHP CMP library, of course. Um, I only wrote a small wrapper around the smart TPL, one class with a constructor that takes the name of the template, an assign function that assigns some data to it, and a fetch function that displays the template. It's simple. And inside the get module function, I define the class and the functions that are the methods that are on it. And I add it to the extension object. That's all you need to write an extension. So by doing this, we have this extension. And the most scary thing that I did this morning was running it. That's really because there is no optimization in the code at all. I was doing only stupid things, making full string copies and working with smart points, all the things that you would normally not do if you wanted to write optimized code. So the most scary thing I did was writing, was, you, was, was testing this more. And you don't want it to be slow. Okay, this is that. Very simple that. We know this. I wrote a simple PHP script, which you can see right here. The PHP script takes one command line argument if you want to run it natively or if you want to run it 
uh, with the original Smarty uh, PHP implementation. It creates a Smarty object, which is called MySmarty, with the native code. It assigns some variables, and 100 times after each other, it's going to display the template. And the PHP code does exactly the same thing. But that does not use the native implementation, but it uses the smart implementation, the PHP implementation. Let's run it. This is the original PHP setup, 100,000 times template, 3.8 seconds. It's a very simple template. And this is the native implementation, 0 0.3. So by not even doing our best to optimize anything, we get a 10 times better impro uh, performance improvement. Yes. Yeah, you but know, your benchmark is not good because uh, you compile the extension with the GCC compiler. With the? With the GCC compiler, I guess. I guess, yes. Um, and uh, you were just uh, recalculating the template again and again. And of course, this GCC compiler is crazy good at caching. What do you mean? Your extension. Uh, yes. I'm quite sure it, it does good caching stuff with memory and with CPU registers and stuff like this. Yes. Uh, the, the machine code, because it's compiled by a compiler that uh, has a development time of 20 or. The display function get calls 100,000 times. Yes. But uh, I'm, I'm quite sure that uh, that this is cached. Oh, but who cares? The PHP is also composed with a bit of a GCC. Yeah, okay. Yep, yeah, okay. <laughs> If you? Um, if you would assign the, 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 the smarty variable h with the value of the counting variable i for each fetch call. But maybe we can prevent it. You're annoying. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> but, uh, We can. I have the code here, so we can easily change it. It would be nice to see. I yes. don't think it would be much different. But I believe you that it's pretty fast. I, this, this is the first time that but I tried. Is a long I tried this is the first time I tried. Um, okay, remember the PHP CPU use cases that I once mentioned. Uh, you should use PHP CPU if you want speed. Well, we got speed. Memory use we, we haven't seen, but I have the idea that it uses less memory. The cool thing is we have used, indeed, external libraries. We have used Flex, we have used Lemon, we have used uh, Libjit, which was not possible with just PHP. So we have used external libraries. And we have now a smart engine that can only also be used from other projects uh, instead of only from PHP. So we have scored all four reasons why you should use, in what situation you should use PHP C++. So this is a very good example of a project where PHP C++ makes sense. Well, while I was busy doing this, I thought, well, it is a waste of time to compile your template every time over and over again, so why don't store this machine code to disk? So once you wrote the template, you can compile it using a smart TPL template of TPL uh, instruction. This turns that TPL file into machine code and stores it to disk so that you can also load it like that, like shared object file which even saves the, the, the parsing and the code generation phase. And it's, not, it's, it's even faster than the fashion. <coughs> this is the end of the talk. Don't be afraid to use uh, the tools that, that I mentioned. They are free for you to use. They are all open source. They are fun to use. They are not difficult. They are easy. Uh, and 
every time in your life you find yourself in a position that you're, you're, that you're using a big set of regular expressions to parse a style sheet or to parse an HTML file or to parse a database query or so, be aware there are tools for it. The tools are easy to use and with PHP CPP you don't have to limit yourself to just using PHP tools to parse data. Okay, thank you. Do we have questions? Okay.